So I'm very happy to welcome to stage uh, Teresa Maciejnow from the Ministry of Investment and Economic Development in Poland. Welcome, Teresa. Mrs. Ms. Ann Irene Satternes from the Eastern Norway County Network. And Mr. Igor, Igor Kapirin from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Russia. So, Igor, if you, you could. Very good. Yes. So, welcome to the sessions. So, as we said, we've heard something about what the program has already done. And you have been part in this process. You have been participating in the selection of those ideas. And um, maybe now I would like to start with uh, Teresa asking you, so support for the European Union has reached record high in Poland, as recent opinion polls show. And uh, Poland is also a very strong player in our program. From your point of view, when you look at the achievements here, would you like to comment on any of those, we think, quite impressive figures? And maybe what impressed you most? Um, let me start um, with good afternoon to um, a participant. Um, yes, indeed, I participate in selecting the project, but I remember also very well um, 2014, it was November, when we started uh, our program in Warsaw with our first conference. Uh, we together with the pleasure to introduce the concept of our program uh, to the audience. Mm -hmm. And uh, back then it was uh, already very clear that the program will be ambitious. Um, the program, as a text, was full of um, very important words, important concepts like capitalization, like um, sustainability, etc. So for me, uh, now, when I look at um, the program, at this peak of uh, program's activities, uh, it is very uh, important uh, to notice that uh, out of those theoretical concepts, uh, included in the program documents, our participants managed to um, draw very creative um, paths, links, and they prepared us as monitoring committee with a huge number of uh, very interesting and very, sometimes to me, surprising um, ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was not surprised at all um, listening to Eva uh, and mentioning things like lipstick mm -hmm. uh, in the context of synchrotron, <laughs> because it is important uh, to notice the small details. I could add to this, uh, you also mentioned um, edible uh, table, uh, mm, not tables, I'm just exaggerating, um, table, mm -hmm. tableware, mm -hmm. <laughs> so plates, edible mm -hmm. plates. Uh, and um, I could um, add on, from my uh, encounter uh, some uh, beauty products produced by another project, Alliance. So uh, those things, when we mention them, uh, sound very attractive and alluring, sometimes amusing, and it is a very good thing, because um, they attract um, audience and they attract attention to the truly and seriously good and important results of our project. Because, of course, the lipstick is um, connected with this testing new research uh, achievements uh, in small enterprises. And uh, the beauty products uh, are not just beauty products in our projects, but they also stand for um, blue growth and development of uh, economies in also on local level around Baltic Sea. So that is, um, from my perspective, um, the biggest achievement I'd like to comment on. And if you ask me from the Polish perspective, uh, the fair number of uh, Polish participants, 118 nearly, uh, is uh, for me a good uh, message. And we have a good uh, also mixture. Uh, 
big involvement of research institutes, but also local and regional um, institutions are more um, authorities are more and more active in this program, uh, which combines a good um, promise for future. Um, surprisingly for me, because I'm also a member of um, Central Europe um, Monitoring Committee, uh, the number of participants in projects in both programs is nearly identical, uh, which uh, I think means that it confirms uh, the message that both uh, programs, both directions of cooperation are equally important for Poland and we do hope that uh, we will cooperate even more intensively in future in both uh, areas. Thank you very much, uh, Teresa, for these first reflections. So now I turn to Anirin. So Teresa said that tangible results um, and sharing technology and research facilities in the Baltic Sea region were impressive to her and that local and regional players are involved from Poland. You're coming from Norway. Norway has been a partner in our program since the beginning. And from your point of view, what are the topics that Norwegian partners are mostly interested in and um, also which type of partners you see as most important in our programs. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nice to be here. Uh, uh, first of all, I wanted also to say that this is, um, the, the program is a very good uh, example that we can work together across EU members, non-EU members. The program has always been adaptable to the changing situation in the bigger picture of Europe, European development. We have been all the way part of the work trying to achieve this kind of genuine cooperation, bridging between the European Union and the closest neighbors. Mm -hmm. And I'm very proud that we have been managing to be uh, actively involved, both from Norwegian side and also having Russia as a real partner in projects. I think this is showing that the Baltic Sea can do something uh, for the benefit of the development of Europe. And also then addressing what uh, the Minister of European Affairs in Schleswig-Holstein already mentioned this morning. So I just wanted to underline that. And also that we have our regional authorities, regions on board in the monitoring committee so mm -hmm. that we can keep this bottom up as I am both representing Norway, but also being one of the regional representatives, mm -hmm. which I appreciate highly, and I think this is important for our success. Uh, when it comes to the Norwegian uh, part, as you saw, there was um, not that many actors involved, but still uh, with the amount of money we have, so we have used the money we have, so we, we could not... Uh, maybe think of very much more. We have been involved in all together 40 projects, but the 32 as a partner, but also in an additional eight as an associate partner. And the most popular uh, has also from the Norwegian side been the non-technological innovation, which is a broad, different broad uh, aspect of, of topics. But uh, we have also been, the majority of Norwegian actors has been in the transport priority, mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. So there we have been in 13 projects uh, and uh, two as associated, being the maritime safety issue, which is of course important with the knowledge now we have along the coast to the North Sea, bringing this knowledge to the Baltic Sea or, or interact. Uh, also on the green, clean shipping, mm -hmm. always a big shipping nation. Uh, this is also, I think, very beneficial to have this involvement in the Baltic Sea, and also on this rural Baltic accessibility, the mm -hmm. small one. Mm -hmm. So there are three projects, and Norway are involved in two of them. So, so this means that we have around rural areas, maybe also parallel to the Baltic Sea, which brings Norwegian actors on board. Uh, also in Norway, the local and regional authorities are still uh, very interested in a program, and I hope really uh, to, to, to keep it that way, because mm -hmm. I think this uh, bottom-up cooperation is important. But we have seen, of course, also that no universities are interested, even though now we have a high mm -hmm. co-financing rate. We have 50% of own co-financing to be brought into the program. Mm -hmm. And that's not typical what the universities and research institutions have. Mm -hmm. So, But still, this is interesting for them. 
and also private sector partners. We have eight uh, in this of these 36, mm -hmm. which I also find quite mm -hmm. uh, quite good. And national agencies, of course. Mm -hmm. So uh, coming also not mentioning the EU SPSR, which Norway is not really a direct member, but mm. an associated mm. uh, partner. So we are partners in 15 of the flagship projects. Mm -hmm. So even of this um, 32 projects that we are officially partners in, 15 are flagship. So still, mm. this is important for us that uh, what is in the Baltic Sea strategy it relates to what we are interested in, relates to the strategy. So, so it adds up in a way uh, mm -hmm. also for, from our side. And some of our actors are also involved actually in the implementation part of the strategy in the priority four. So I think this is yeah. for now. Thank you. This was a good reflection. So we know what, Nor what matters in Norway and for Norway. Um, Igor, we have for the first time the Russian Federation joining the program with own funding, matching EU funding. Um, as we all know, it came fairly late. Um, but it came, and we can also notice with satisfaction, I think, that the interest is high uh, for Russian organizations. I think at the moment we have some 40 uh, project partners uh, from Russia already in the projects, and hopefully some to come still. So, for Norway, as a neighboring country, transport, uh, green shipping, accessibility, Anirin mentioned it, um, what are the main topics of interest for the Russian partners, in our case, the partners from Northwest Russia? Um, yeah, what they would like to do, and um, where do you see the potential for the still opening projects? So we still have some um, projects that can take Russian partners on board. Where do you see the potential there? Thank you, Suzanne. But first of all, uh, good afternoon to all the Interact family. It's a great pleasure to be here in the land of uh, great history and great people. Well, uh, we came, in fact, uh, for the first time to this pro program with our own, fun own funding. It continues, to some extent, the cross-border cooperation experience that we had since 2009. And uh, normally it continues the long story of the cooperation and the TASIS and so on. So the program was not uh, something very unknown, but uh, it's a new spirit based on what I love mm. very much, on the responsibility and ownership and the sense of ownership, uh, which we are now trying to promote and to support in the uh, project partners. Uh, going, into the, uh, going into the priorities, uh, I should not say that the transport is the, the most uh, actively used priority. Our partners are essentially in the innovation. Mm -hmm. And here I must stress the strong involvement of St. Petersburg as, uh, as our nord northern capital. And also natural resources, essentially the environmental mm -hmm. uh, points uh, where the Kaliningrad region, much more exposed to the, to the Baltic Sea, uh, is uh, taking the lead with also nine or eight or nine projects. So um, these, uh, uh, we have different, you, you rightly said that we had more than 40 uh, project partners, 43 if I'm not mistaken, which was, was mm -hmm. shown here. We can have more if, uh, and here, I would like to ask and invite the lead partners of the third call to involve Russian partners. They, uh, there is a decision, a specific decision of monitoring committee uh, inviting uh, the lead partners of the third call, of a project approved at the third call, to involve Russian participants. Uh, we are ready to support it. Uh, there are uh, financing for that, and uh, it will enlarge yeah. not, uh, not only the number of projects, but also the number of projects partners. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you very much for this statement. You. As you can see, we have um, representatives here from two neighboring countries and from one EU country. So it means that um, cooperation with all our neighbors really matters for the Baltic Sea region and we need to have all on board. And there is still funding for Russian partners and there is almost no funding left for EU partners. So this was a good message. Now, um, Teresa, you talked about what has impressed you here and um, what is so that these tangible outcomes also matter. Um, what would you say in general? So how, how would you describe the main benefits for an institution 
um, to participate in interreg transnational projects. Or can you give an example also from Poland, perhaps? Um, I didn't mention before, but uh, what is also important, and it's also related to your question, of course, that um, in Poland, uh, which is a relatively big country, uh, not all regions uh, neighbor with the coast, um, but also, in this perspective, it is quite visible that uh, also um, institutions um, from the southern part of Poland mm -hmm. are very active, mm -hmm. which means that the offer of the program is um, very attractive to them as well. And, um, for example, we have uh, um, areas uh, like um, not technological uh, innovation, where, of course, there is uh, room for cooperation even for those regions uh, not uh, neighboring the sea. Um, as an example, I could, um, I could give uh, participation in mobility uh, projects. Uh, Mamba, it's uh, the topic of um, mobility in the rural areas, the populated areas. And uh, what is very uh, important feature of the projects we receive now is that they see uh, certain challenges in a bigger picture. Mm -hmm. So if it's a project about mobility in rural areas, it is also about depopulating areas, demographic issues, um, access to jobs, uh, access to education. Everything is linked and uh, seen in, a, in this uh, broader con context, uh, which is, I think, very important uh, um, uh, sign because this may lead finally to our um, desired uh, results uh, that the programs and the uh, projects and the results will go outside the program itself and some results will be uh, transferred to um, other bigger programs. We have examples for exa uh, for, for from Poland um, Participate, with participation of Poland, uh, the project's EMMA, mm -hmm. uh, dealing with a very important issue of uh, inland uh, waterways uh, and this type of transport. Um, and Polish uh, beneficiaries not just uh, learn and exchange experience, uh, experience and uh, work on new solutions, but they also uh, test certain things. They prepare uh, investment to mm -hmm. be financed from other sources. Um, which is exactly what we expect, uh, I would like to see in future. Um, in this program, uh, it is mainly um, activities uh, of uh, soft characters that we uh, can finance. Uh, but nevertheless, they can lead to some uh, bigger changes. And uh, that is also um, uh, the hope uh, we have for future. So at this moment of the program implementation, in its peak of activities, mm -hmm. maybe it's too early to, to tell what will remain after our project. But uh, I'm very optimistic because already now we can see examples of uh, looking for uh, spin-offs, looking for funding opportunities up outside our program and uh, uh, to, to continue and to make something bigger from the results of our relatively small uh, project. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Now, Anirin, I think Teresa has given the keyword already, talking about the broader picture and um, the, uh, yeah, what, what happens when the project has ended. So you've been working as a member in our monitoring committee for many years. So from your experience now, how would you, I mean, what would you say, what can be the ultimate achievement of such a program like Interreg? And what is needed, perhaps, around that? The program or the projects? <laughs> well, well we both. Got, I mean, yeah. the program is the yeah. frame and the projects are the content. <laughs> yeah. Yes, of course. Mm. Well, I think that we can always say that we should be better in this uh, promoting the results mm. and, uh, and bringing them forward. And, of course, our, we have been better, growingly being better, also in the Montreal Committee, putting that as a, as a condition for projects that uh, they have thought about what will be the life after the projects mm -hmm. and how they will, uh, let's say, spread the good words, the good knowledge, the, the practice examples also beyond the partnership. Uh, and, uh, and I think that is, uh, is uh, 
something we have to do even more, uh, more of, and, and uh, this kind of conferences then to sort of discuss and, and, and lift out uh, the, the, um, the challenges that uh, the, the different projects are, are um, uh, dealing with, and uh, how to bring it into the private sector. We have been mm -hmm. uh, starting to involve private sector because we need to have the beneficiaries of the results uh, on board, so this will be, of course, important to, to maybe make these things happen. It means also maybe to have the national authorities on board making the politics, because mm -hmm. sometimes when it is, you need to move the rules and the procedures and, uh, and uh, how you, you uh, make a common uh, legislation or something like that. So you need the real, uh, the, the, the partners on board that can really make it happen in the end, or you have to at least have a plan for how to to um, get the message through mm. so that things mm. will happen. And, uh, and I think that we have been, uh, been doing <laughs> a good job on that and uh, I think we are, are still have, have something uh, more to do. And this is really high on the agenda in, in Norway when we're discussing mm. the future of Interreg, what is really the, the long-term um, beneficially mm -hmm. uh, of the uh, of the results, and how can we lift these uh, results then up to the to the uh, the vision or to the the mindset or the, the thinking of of the people who are involved. involved. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this is the the general public, but it is the the uh, different uh, authorities, is the different actors that can take this uh, message on, and mm -hmm. and it doesn't have to be one project leading to a next project or to mm. another financial instrument, but really to, to maybe uh, have a more uh, of the investments in, at the national level, for example, that mm. could really lead to infrastructure investments or to the changes of the, the politics. So mm. I think we have been on a, on a good track already, and I think mm. we still have, uh, have uh, to, to keep this really high. On, on uh, origin, and that's not just Norway, that's for, for all of the mm. partner countries, mm. I would say, uh, mm. in this, um, mm. yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Anneli, and I think this was a strong message, um, which we all got, so how to connect our results to the ones who need them. Um, I guess at the end, this is also going to be the case in Russia. You mentioned that innovation is a is a field of, of uh, interest for many of the Russian partners, which of course we also notice in the project. So what type, what type of innovation do you think people are mostly interested in, and is there a preparedness to make further use of them? Uh, the question of preparedness is very relevant, and I subscribe entirely what, uh, what Anne Ren just said. Um, all innovations, but in these innovations, I believe that the most important is uh, the spirit of working together. Mm. Uh, I do, I'm, mm. I'm not in, po in a position to make a choice of one or another priority or one or another project. There are some mm, uh, very interesting. But uh, if you go to the other extremity of these uh, marvelous building, you will find a lot of postcards where every project, at least every project with Russian participants, um, have exposed their main idea of the project. And if I have read, if you give me one minute, mm -hmm. I've read some, and you will see that, uh, for example, the words better use, boost creativity, useful results, dialogue, working together, source of economic progress, are very actively mm. present there. But what me impressed more, it's from one project where a person from St. Petersburg said, Small person can inf understood that the small person can influence global challenges, but its behavior in the day by day life. So for me, uh, it's the one of the maybe main objective uh, of uh, working together. And uh, mm, we are not putting uh, a great objective for the innovations. It's mm -hmm. to know to work on the project basis. Mm to uh, know to work uh, on the basis of Russian Northwest strategy in dialogue with the Baltic Sea strategy and other strategies of Norway and, and to, to go ahead with this spirit. We are at the first stage of this work. There are a lot of, a lot of things to do and I hope that next, next uh, programming conference more Russian participants would come mm -hmm. 
uh, to see these achievements, achievements and to present their achievements, including okay. in the technological area. Good. Thank you very much. I think this was the conclusion now you made instead of me. Thank you very much, monitoring committee members, for your contributions. Thank you.